In this video, I'm going to show you how to model and 3D print functional threads to incorporate into your 3D printed assemblies. For some inspiration, here's one of my first ones, a simple threaded clamp. From there, I went on to create full packages of screws in a single print. Here's a set I made for the vertical monitor stand from a previous video. Once I got that part down, I was able to create and print some special threaded parts, which I simply wouldn't be able to buy anywhere else. This rifle rest assembly from a previous video uses some special nuts, a large diameter threaded rod, and a matching flange wing nut. And if you're a fan of this channel, you may have already seen the shorts I made where I did a quick run through of modeling threads. I often refer to these myself and I'm glad I made them. I did one short for female threads and one for male threads. Now I'll never forget how to do it. If you're looking for a brief instruction, go ahead and give them a watch. And welcome back to Sanford Prime. So unless you've been living as a castaway on an island your whole life, you'll probably know what threads are. But just in case, here's a recap of the last 10,000 years. It is believed that threads originated in some form from ancient Egyptians. At the time they were building the pyramids, they were also raising water using screw-like spiral flightings. Threads didn't become mainstream until the 3rd century BC when Archimedes began using them in some of his works. At this time, threads were rudimentary, and only as good as a blacksmith or a carpenter's trained eye. It wasn't until the Industrial Revolution when Henry Maudsley, who was credited with lathes specifically for thread cutting, was the first to make a standardized thread repeatably. Believe it or not, threads are categorized as one of the six simple machines, being that they change the direction and magnitude of a force. If you ask me, it's really a combination of two different simple machines. So why use printed threads? Why not use press-in threaded inserts and real screws? Or design the part with lots of snap together parts? Here's a cross section of a snap fit, which might be difficult to take apart. I could use dovetails, which I did on my rubber band gun, bridle joints, I just see these falling apart. Some models I've seen use printed retaining rings, which work pretty good, but they're difficult to hold parts tight together. They're more for rotating things. Here I used an E-clip for some spring-loaded shafts on my bear trap. I guess you could always go download some threads. Bruh. Here's an awesome website. Let's just look for a simple inch size socket head cap screw. It filters down based on your selection, so let's just look for a 5 8 11 screw. Then select a length as, I don't know, one and a half inches? Yes, socket head. It's already spitting out what's available. Let's just pick this first part number for a black oxide steel. Click on the product detail and it gives a ton of information specific to this screw. It even kind of gives a preview of what it looks like. But I'm not here for the info and pretty pictures. I want the 3D model. I mean, it's a model of the actual part you're buying. Of course, I do have some reservations about 3D printing it directly from here. Can you maybe eyeball what might give a printer some problems? Mainly, I'd be concerned with the serrations on the rim of the head, and the bottom of the socket drive would require some bridge printing as is. And being that the model is native to SolidWorks, and I have the whole design tree at my disposal, I can suppress the knurled serrations pretty easy. The bridge printing is a different story. I'll address that later. Here I'm going to show you my process for making them from scratch. Let's start with making a new sketch on the top plane of a circle, and give it a dimension of 9 16 of an inch. Green check want to extrude that upward by 3 eighths of an inch. Green check. And I'm off to a good start. Simple modeling so far, huh? Next, I want to create another sketch of a circle on the top side of the cylinder I just created. And then give that a diameter dimension of 3 eighths of an inch as well. Back to my features tab, extrude boss base, and I want a length to be one inch. It's looking as expected, so green check on that one too. From there, I want to create another sketch on the opposite side. This time it's going to be a polygon with six sides. Give it a diameter dimension, which is also the across flats dimension since it's circumscribed, of 5 sixteenths of an inch. Then finally, since I like my sketches to be fully constrained, a horizontal constraint. And then instead of extruding this profile as a boss, I'm going to cut extrude it to relieve material. I'm just guessing at a depth, this isn't something I'm familiar with offhand. And I can tell you right now that it doesn't look good. Looking at the section view, this thing is wrong. Luckily for me, there are charts readily available online where I can look these things up. I just follow the 3.8 screw across to find the T dimension as this chart shows, and it looks like it should be 0.182 inch. Now I can just edit the last cut extrude and correct it to the 0.182. That looks way better. It's starting to take form, but still needs a bit of cleanup. I'm going to start with adding some relief to where the Allen wrench engages. For this, I'm going to create another sketch on the head of the screw, a circle just slightly larger than the points of the hex. 
I'm sure there's a standard for this, but I'm just gonna go with three eighths of an inch. Well, maybe 10 thousandths larger. That looks good to me. Back to the features tab for the cut extrude. Just guessing at the 1 8 of an inch, but this time I want to add a draft angle. Let's say 60 degrees. Green check and we can see what it looks like. It's a little better effect than adding a bunch of chamfers, wouldn't you say? It accomplishes the same thing. Alright, one more sketch and we'll get this head taken care of. This time I want to sketch on the bottom of the hex drive. For this I want to select the bottom surface of the hex drive and click Convert Entities. I want to cut extrude this the same way as the previous relief. Previous depth is a good start. Add a draft angle. Sure, 60 degrees looks good. This is going to eliminate the need for bridge printing as you might see in the preview. Green check and it's all good. So now it's six minutes into the video and I'm finally getting to what you came here for. Threads. SolidWorks has some powerful tools hidden in the hole wizard, even though it's not a hole. Nonetheless, expand the hole wizard and click thread. From there, I want to select the starting edge that dictates how the wizard reacts. The end of where the screw should start. Oh boy, it gave me a funky thread. Well, let's get into the wizard and adjust it to what I need. In this wizard, you'll find the tap and die tools for metric and standard threads and SP4XX bottle. Being that we have an external thread, this would be considered the die. Then come down here and select the diameter and thread pitch. I think I'm going to go with coarse thread for this one, 3 8 diameter and 16 threads per inch. Since it's drawn as a 3 8 inch outside diameter already, I'm going to want to cut the thread. There are more options here such as left hand and multiple start. I'm going to stay with the traditional right hand thread and a single flight. Up here the length of the screw can be driven a number of different ways. I'll just go with the blind dimension. The blind length can be incremented up or down using these arrows, but I'll opt to just type in 3 quarters of an inch instead. Now it shows a preview of what the threads will look like. I do see one thing though, they don't extrude out past the end. This could be a problem, so I'm going to have to add an offset to the start location. Check this box and type in something that makes easy math. Oops, it went the wrong way. Just have to click this button to flip the direction of the offset, then add the offset dimension to the thread length intended. One inch should do. It all looks good, so green check again. How about that? Now there's threads. Piece of cake, right? But I'm not done yet. The thread still needs some end relief. For this, it's another sketch on the screw's end. Yep, you guessed it. It's another circle. I just want to orient it on the axis and keep it smaller diameter than the nearest thread. Then just a dimension to constrain it. Yeah, I know. OCD's a killer. Extrude cut again, the same as before, except it looks like it just wants to drill a hole. Easy solution is to check the box for flip side to cut. Then a draft angle of 45 degrees again, green check. Looking better. And then some more quick touch ups, a chamfer on the screw head to eliminate the sharp corners, 30 thousandths of an inch should do fine here. With the intended print orientation, chamfers will do better here than a radius, but they're so small with this screw that either one would probably be good. And I guess that does it. This model is good enough for me. Unless you want to take care of where the threads stop at the neck. It's kind of an eyesore, but it still works. I've got rid of this before, but it doesn't really matter. Most screws hold through something, with the thread engagement only being necessary a certain distance from the underside of the head. Take for example this vertical monitor stand assembly. If I section it, you'll see that there's a washer and then a slotted piece, with the threads being unused up near the head. So I guess it's design specific what is done here. I'm just going to leave them as is for now for the purposes of this video. Alright, so earlier I downloaded a model from McMaster Car for a different size, and I just downloaded another one that's the same size as the model I just created to compare the two against each other a little. There is one part of the McMaster Car model that I really like, and that's how the threads end with a conical transition up to the head. The straight knurls on the outside probably won't show up too well printing, and I'd probably just suppress them even though they look cool and all. Also, if I were to print the Master Car model, I would add some angles to the flat plane to show where bridge printing would be necessary. All these are pretty simple to do, it's actually a really impressive model to use. So why did I print a socket head screw? Well I have a legit reason and a few non-legit ones. The button head would be difficult to print standing on the screw end because of the small build plate engagement area and the radius pointing downward. The socket head has a little bit more surface in contact with the print bed and tends to stick better. But the main reason I prefer the socket head is the hex driver dimension for comparable thread sizes. Even though the flat head has lots of engagement with the build plate, it still uses a really small allen wrench. The button head wrench size is the same dimension as the flat head, small. 
With a larger wrench size, more torque can get transmitted without stripping out the delicate 3D printed materials. All right, so you got the external threads down now, right? Let's see how different it is to create some internal threads. Beginning with a simple 2D sketch on the top plane, I'll create a six-sided polygon. I want this hex nut to match the screw I just created, so I'll add the dimension for the 3 8 hex nut, which uses a 9 16 wrench. This is just my OCD kicking in to have fully defined sketches now. Now from the Features tab, I'll select Boss Extrude and give it a distance of 0.328 inches. Green check. Off to a good start. This next step is a little different than the external thread. I'm going to use a hole wizard that is part of SolidWorks to determine what the drill diameter is instead of looking it up. But I'm going to use the straight tap shown here. Come down to set some specifications for the hole. I want the matching thread to the screw, so I'm going to select 3816. And condition is OK with through all. And I typically use this cosmetic thread option because it displays the threads better in engineering drawings, but the one to the left will work as well. Let's see here. Oh yeah, countersinks. Alright, moving on to positions. All it needs to know is where to put the hole. This one's pretty simple, since the model was created centered around the origin. The position is just the origin. Should be all set, so green check again. Now I have the drill hole through at the proper dimension if I were to machine this thread, or use a thread tap. I could look this up from a table, but SolidWorks determined that the hole through should be 5 16 of an inch, using the same hole wizard. But this time using the drop down, and then the threads option again. Beginning with the start direction pick box, I want to give it the circular apex at the end of the through hole. For thread specification, I want to change it from inch die to inch tap. End condition selected as blind will be alright. One inch long is also still alright since it's not as less than 3 eighths of an inch in length. But I do want to turn on this offset for the start location to ensure the threads fully exit the piece. Let's just take a look at the other selections the wizard allows here. Okay, green check. It's kind of starting to look like a real hex nut now. It's probably printable and usable as it's modeled right now, but I want to do a little cleanup on it to make printing go smoother and give it a nice feel and appearance. For this, I'm going to add a 1 32nd chamfer to the top and bottom size by selecting each segment of the hex ends individually. Preview looks good, so green check. It doesn't look the greatest in the model, but the chamfers will print better than fillets with the intended print orientation. Then for the vertical straight edges, I'll use a fillet to round the corners. I'll select each one of these individually as well. Just like that, I have a 3D printable hex nut. Let's get these things to the slicer. Okay, so you watched me model this screw standing on end, right? Or did you just skip through to get to the good stuff? How come when I place it into the slicer, it defaults to laying on its side? Here you can see all the settings I'm using to print this from PLA material. I like the wall thickness of functional parts like this to be a few layers or so. Top and bottom thickness, 3mm. Infill is at 5% from a previous print, but I'm going to change that to 10% in here, as if it makes a big difference. Printing temp I have set to 200C with the build plate at 50C, print speed 60mm per second. Instead of using brim, I just want to see if my bed is level enough for the first layer, so I usually run with a skirt. So let's get this screw sliced. Not too bad at 34 minutes. I'm just going to do a layer by layer preview and see if there are any obvious artifacts. Looks like there are no surprises, so off to the printer it goes. That looks like a successful print job if I say so myself. On closer inspection it looks like it came out very screw-like. So far so good. Let's get this hex nut onto the slicer and see what we're working with. Yeah, this one came into the slicer in the wrong orientation too. And I'm just going to send it to the printer with the same exact settings I used for the screw since it turned out so well. Quick print, already done. I barely got to throw the dog's frisbee around. Well, the same way the screw looks like a screw, the nut looks like a nut. There are no disappointments. Yet. And speaking of disappointments, let's see if they fit together. It's a hard no on that one. So if you've ever been here, the quick way to fix it and move on is one of these, a tap and die set. I intentionally printed these small enough that my set could be used. It only goes up to 7 16 thread. But I can't do this with every size I've used. The larger ones need to come out perfect right from the printer. 
so I'm going to have to fix it in the model. Looking at the section view of the screw and nut, I can see that there isn't much clearance. When the printer lays down a line, it smushes a little. I'm going to need to open up this clearance a bit. For this, I'm going to roll back the design tree of the nut all the way back to the whole wizard hole. You can see here that it hid everything below it that depends on this feature. This hole in the middle is something I want to open up a little. I can do this a number of ways, but I'm going to insert a new sketch on the end surface. Draw a circle slightly larger than the through hole. Then give it a dimension so that it is known and it holds if any other changes are made. Let's start with something small, let's say 0 0.005. Then I'm going to extrude cut this through the hex nut. Green check. Roll the design tree back down to the thread feature. As expected it now has an error. I removed the circle that I initially selected for the threads with the cut extrude so I'm going to have to just reselect it. And the threads are back. I don't expect any more errors as I roll the tree down. Perfect. Well, that's half of it. Let's get the screw changed. From the tree, I'm just going to expand the extrusion that was the barrel of the screw and edit the original sketch below. It's severely complicated math, so I'll let SolidWorks subtract the five thousandths of an inch. Green check. Exit the sketch. And we're back to normal without any errors. But I do want to change one more thing. The thread lead-in chamfer at the end of the screw. So I'll edit that sketch again as well. Same thing. Let SolidWorks do the complicated math subtracting five thou. Green check, exit sketch, and it's done, again. Now when I look at the assembly with the nut and screw together, there's quite a bit more clearance between the two that hopefully should account for the printing smush. I guess I'll send it to the printer again. Starting with a nut this time, and I wanted to color code these prints so you can tell I'm not cheating, so I'm going with a different color. Well, that didn't work well. Not only did it fall over, it has all these hairs all over it. This is not what I expected to happen. It's pretty much unusable. I'm gonna try a different color filament. Well, it didn't fall over, but it still has these strings all over it. This one almost has larger boogers firmly attached as well. While I get my filament problems figured out, I'm going to try to print this McMaster car screw just out of curiosity. This is a different material yet. You know, at first glance it looks like it came out pretty good. The issue I knew I was going to have is the bridging at the bottom of the hex drive, which isn't so pretty. But it's still usable I'd say at this point. Speaking of usable, let's test that part out. Here I have a 3816 stainless steel hex nut to try it with. It started, but it got really tight just before the nut was fully engaged. I wouldn't call this a loss by any means. It wouldn't take much to get it in good shape. This is a viable option in my book. Anyways, back to what I set out to do. And just to make things more confusing around here, I resorted back to the purple filament that came out so nicely the first time. And it looks like it came out nicely a second time as well. So now the moment of truth for the internal and external threads. Two 3D printed parts, each one with a little bit of additional clearance. Oh my gosh, it worked. And it's so smooth too. So they work together printed to printed pieces. Let's check to see how well it works with the stainless steel standard nut I used earlier. Like butter. And likewise with the printed hex nut and standard stainless steel screw. Who would have thought that a screw and nut could be such a fidget toy? If you found any part of this video helpful and want to see more, please consider subscribing. If you liked what you saw, don't be afraid to hit that thumbs up button. If you have anything that you'd like to say to me or the world, drop a comment. As always, there's more content on the way. Thanks for watching.